from Loom Keeps. I am currently at the headquarters of Gitaround. When Gitaround first told us they can give us a factory tour as we are one of their valued partners, I was so excited about the opportunity. Loom Keeps is based in California, San Francisco. Flying to Huizhou, China takes about 15 hours. Super excited and uh, eager to see the headquarters of Gitaround. And uh, I also wanted to show you guys what their manufacture process looks like, how they make switches. You see there is one one huge building, but it's not just one, it's three. Here is the detail of the tour Gateround put together. Um, I can see they definitely put a lot of time and effort, so I'm very grateful for this opportunity. The first part of the tour is the presentation of the company. Gitaran has been around for 20 years. They have over 600 employees serving customers worldwide. In case you have been living under a rock, Gitaran is the maker of the popular switches such as Aoyukin, North Pole. The company is known for the quality of their switches and the smoothness of the switches. This is the founder and the CEO. When I asked him why he started the get around, why mechanical keyboard, why switches, he said that the first board he used was a cherry board. And he thinks he can definitely improve that. He started the company 20 years ago. Super impressive. The next part of the tour is to visit the manufacturing process where magic happens. I'll let my partner to walk you through the technical details. Before we get to the good stuff, I'm going to plug our store a little bit. Check out loomkeeps.com. We carry most of Gatoron's top new switches as well as many other brands. And we also have some of these custom designed 3D printed products that are only available from us. Without further ado, let's get right into the factory floor. The first part, we are going to be looking at molds. These are injection molds. And as you can see, you've got workers here. They're assembling the latest and greatest of these molds. And they've got tons of these molds all over the factory floor. For those of you that are not familiar with injection molding, that is the main process at which your switches, tops, bottoms, and stems are created by injecting molten plastic at high pressure into these cavities. So here you can see a close up of an injection mold. It is extremely important part of the manufacturing process for Gatoron because the tolerances and accuracy of the molds is what differentiates their switches from other switch makers. And the tighter the tolerances, the better the performance of the switch. Now let's get into the process at which they actually make the mold in terms of the shapes and so forth. So what we're looking at here is a CNC machine. For those of you that are not familiar with CNC, what you're seeing here is the CNC machine in action. So what you have is a piece of metal, in this case, what looks to be copper, and that's being held up by a brass holder to make sure it stays in place while it's being cut. So what CNC is, is it's something called subtractive manufacturing. And what that really means is you start off with a block of copper and you slowly cut that piece of copper into shape. So that's what this thing is doing right now. It's spraying coolant on it to cool it down while it's being cut. And you cut it to the shape that you need. And all of this is computer controlled and designed in CAD. So what Gatoron is doing here is creating these little copper pieces with the shapes that they will need to imprint onto the mold through a separate process we're going to walk through shortly. So the CNC machine is a highly precise manufacturing process with the precision of roughly 0 0.005 inch, which is really, really precise. And so that's what they're using to cut these different shapes. And now we look at the output of the CNC machine. As you can see here, these are blocks of copper with very specific shapes that are going to be used to imprint onto the final mold. As you can see, some of these shapes are extremely thin and the level of precision required here is extremely high. And so they do a lot of quality control at this stage of the process to make sure that these copper stamps are precisely manufactured to form the shape of the switch that they want eventually. In the next room, 
This is where we see them use the little pieces of copper that we just saw in the last room to imprint specific shapes into the final piece of mold. They use a process known as Sinker EDM, which stands for Electrical Discharge Machining. This is a very advanced process where you have the piece of copper up top and you have your block of metal below for your actual mold. They submerge the piece of metal block below in a dielectric solution. What that really means is it's a solution that has a high resistance to electricity and they put the two pieces very close together and they put a very, very large electrical charge between the two pieces. What that does is the electricity arc arcs between the two pieces and melts away the bottom piece, which is the kind of metal mold that you want to imprint into. What that does is it gives you an extremely precise imprint of the copper piece up top into the mold on the bottom. So the level of tolerances that can be achieved here is 25 times more precise than CNC machining. And there are other benefits such as being able to create very specific and complex shapes in the material and also allows for square edges and which with a CNC machine, because you're using a circular drill bit to drill, usually you end up with rounded edges. So that's kind of why they use this process to actually create the mold. After that, we move into the switch leaf room where you see a stamping machine that stamps out these shapes for the metal leaf. So on the input side, they have a very thin reel of copper metal, which that's stamped out so that you have your holes in the right shapes to create your metal leaf. Uh, as you know, each switch has two primary pieces of metal leaf, and this is where they manufacture them and they roll it into a giant spool, kind of like a cassette tape. So what you see here is many, many, many of these switch leaves. Uh, all in a chain, which will eventually be fed into another machine that separates them out and slides them into the switch under housing automatically. There is a lot of automation in the Gatoron factory. It's quite amazing to see the level of precision as well as speed at which these machines work. Uh, it's really quite a work of art. And now the star of the show, you've made all that work into creating these molds, putting them together, and now you can actually see them in action. So what you're seeing here is the top housing being manufactured. Um, you have two sides of the mold. So you've got the exact shape of your top housings inside these cavities. And what happens is you push these two plates together under very high pressure and you inject in molten plastic, depending on what type of plastic you want on your housing. It could be anything from ABS, polypropylene to UHMWPE, nylon, and so forth. So you've got all these fancy types of materials that you use and you push them into these cavities that you had created very, very precisely in the previous part of the manufacturing process. And that results in these top housings that come out of it being extremely precise and you have much less stem wobble. After the plastic is injected in, they calculate the amount of time it takes for the plastic to actually cool down and harden. And after it cools down, they have this pieces inside the mold, um, these kind of little pushers uh, that are made of metal that kind of shoves the pieces out of the mold. And you can see them kind of flying out of it being ejected. Um, and you see the pile of top housings below. So it's a highly automated process. And once you build the mold, creating top housings is actually extremely quick process. And it's done quite cheaply, right? Because all you really need is molten plastic, which is relatively cheap. So the great thing about injection molding is it's highly repeatable, right? Once you've created the mold, it's highly repeatable. It's, it's very economical to create more pieces and um, each piece would have the tolerances assuming that you've calculated the flow rates correctly the tolerances of the mold so if you have a good mold you're going to have good switches for a long time to come the tricky thing about this process is that it requires a very high initial investment as you can see with all the machines that we just talked about creating 
a high quality mold like the ones that Gatoron is using costs anywhere between ten to eighty thousand dollars. So that's a lot of money to recoup. That's kind of why their switches cost as much as they do because even though the actual manufacturing of each piece of the plastic housings is incredibly cheap, all of that cost of creating the mold is then kind of spread out over the entire production run. The other part is when a new switch is created. Uh, kind of like your latest Gatoron Azure Dragon, for example. Unless they use the exact same shape as other switches, they actually have to create a new custom tooling for the mold. And that's why it costs so much for a new switch to be created. And it actually takes a good amount of time. It's about anywhere between about two weeks to a month to actually create a brand new mold. And that's why you see a lot of switches that reuse the same geometries, right? Like there are a lot of Gatoron switches that have the exact same shape, but they switch up things like materials, right? You change to nylon, you change to um, ABS, you change to polycarbonate um, to change the characteristic of the switch, but the shape is the same. And that's because they can reuse the molds from their previous creation runs and create these brand new switches at a relatively quick and low cost. The last interesting thing to note here with the yellow stems that you can see is that there is typically a bar that connects your stems to each other. And if any of you have built, you know, Tamiya toys, uh, you know, model cars and so forth, you'd see that they typically come with a kind of bar connecting all the pieces and you're going to break them apart. So the reason for that is because when you think about the injection mold, you actually need channels to allow the plastic to flow from one part to another. Because when you do the injection molding, you're doing anywhere between 20 to 100. 80 to 100 parts at the same time, depending on what part you're doing, the plastic flows through all of these parts in one flow, right? And so that's why you have that bar that connects all these parts. That's really the channels that allow your plastic to flow through. So once they created all these different stems, they actually have to cut them off. And that's also a tricky part of process because if you don't cut them correctly and cleanly, you end up with uh, leftover pieces of plastic that ruins the part. Lastly, you can see here a row of these injection molding machines. As you can see, there's a lot of scale with Gatoron and they actually have multiple of these production runs that create different switches. And it's quite impressive to see how many of these machines they have because they are not cheap. Into the last section and part of the secret sauce of Gatoron, this is their automation workshop. And this is where you can kind of see where everything comes together, right? You've got a machine that's placing the sides of the stabilizers onto a holder and after which the actual metal bar is placed in between them and you have a fully assembled piece of a stabilizer, right? That's actually a very tricky thing to do in a precise manner as well as making sure you have the quality controls. And so all of these machines are custom made for this exact purpose and they do the job really well. And here you can see the top housings being checked in a machine to make sure that the top housings meet the right tolerances so that you get that sweet, sweet sound from your Gatoron switch while not having much stem wobble. So it's really quite amazing the level of automation they've achieved here because it takes a lot of menu effort to QC these switches. Trust us, we know because when we lube your switches, we actually do our own internal QC to make sure the switch is up to par and that process takes a long time. So seeing Gatoron have the high level automation to reach that level of kind of precision is really quite cool. The last piece is really the claim to fame, which is an automated lubing machine line, which unfortunately we don't have footage of, but it's very cool in that it puts a very precise amount of lube onto the rails as well as the stem. I know we nerded out a lot over here around these manufacturing processes, but it's actually really, really cool to see all of this in action at Gatoron. And it really gives us a sense of how much work and care goes into making of these switches that you all love so much, right? And it's also kind of showing us why the Gatoron switches in recent year, there's such a fanatic level of obsession over quality that's 
really ingrained into the culture at Gatoron and everything that they do. And it doesn't surprise us at all that their switches are as good as they are today. And so we're very proud to be a partner of theirs and carrying a lot of their products. So hopefully after seeing this video, you have a better sense of what it takes to create a switch and what makes a good switch all comes down to these manufacturing processes as well as the tolerances and so forth. So next time you press a button on a switch and you hear that sweet, sweet sound, remember that it took a lot of work to get there. And now I'll hand it off back to my partner for her to walk you through the last piece of the factory tour. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the technical walkthrough. Next, we visited the showroom. It is still being built because they actually recently moved to this new building. So now behind us, the architecture hallway is designed as a shape of a dragon because Gatorang in Chinese is called Jia De Long, and then Long has double meaning. One is um, success, the other one is dragon. So they make the architecture of the hallway like a dragon, which is super, super cool. Speaking of the name, Gatorang in Chinese is called Jia Da Long. The founder initially wanted to call the company Jia De Long. Jia means the best. De means business morals, Dong means success, success in product designs, manufacturing processes, and the customer experience. However, the name was taken, so they called the company Jia Da Long, which has the similar meaning. Thank you again to Get Around for giving us the wonderful experience. Let us know how you like the video and how you think about their manufacturing process. Make sure to subscribe and visit our store www.loomkeeps.com.